FCE file open here up on my screen, and uh, what it is is a bridge that we've been doing some measurement on using a laser tracker. But what I wanted to show today is how we can look at the review features and go to the readings tab and just check on some of the form on some of these square boxes here. I've got a plan view up on my on my screen here, but what it is is the um, it's the square sections or the boxes that are formed that are welded and are screwed together or bolted together to form the, uh, the structural members of this bridge. And you can see the length on these, on these members too. They're about 100-ish feet long, any place from like 60 feet to 100 feet. And the laser tracker is a great way to measure those up. But we have to check those for flatness and for squareness. But in this module, I'm just going to show how we can look at the review features after taking a plane. And we can go to the readings tab to test it for form. So what I'll do now is I've captured some of the members of this, of this bridge with that tracker. And I'm going to go up to the review features. And I've got the main plane that runs down the, uh, down the middle of the, of the bridge. And what it's got is a, a system of knuckles or pins at this end over here. But this long member here is what I was testing for form or for flatness. So I'll highlight that. And then I'm going to right mouse key to go back on into review features. Okay, there it is. That's that plane A3315 and A3316. It's actually two square boxes put together. But now notice the form what I've got here. I've got about a little bit more than an inch of variation on the form of this, of this big steel piece, which is actually two pieces together. But, boy, that form is a pretty heavy amount of flatness. Flatness and form are the same thing here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I notice up here that I've got 28 points that are forming that plane. So I'm going to go to the readings tab and I've got all of those points that are used to form that plane that are showing up right here. Notice them all, 1 through 28. What I like to do though is I like to go to the column that is the deviation from fit. And I'm going to click on that. And then what it does is it sorts my plane points, or all the points that were used to form that plane. It sorts them from low to high. So notice here that point 18, its deviation from fit is a negative 200 and about 62 thousandths. Okay, well that looks all right. And then all the rest of them are bouncing around here. I'm getting a little bit better, a little bit better, 90-ish thou here, a little bit better. And then I'm scrolling down. Notice how it's it's increasing here then, it's deviation from fit. Now I'm going down to almost no deviation from fit, 9 thou and, and 4 thou here. And then I'm going to start to ramp back up. Here's 1 thou, and then I go to 10 and 40, 50. But now notice I've got two points that were taken on this, on this uh, plane here. It was the 15th and the 16th click uh, with that tracker. And I've got about 800 thousandths. So there's some serious variation that are going on in those two positions. Well, there might be some paint buildup or there might have been some weld splatter. There might have been something going on with the piece there. So what you've got the option to do here is you can deselect 15 and 16. So I'm going to take those points out of that subset because they truly look like they're not part of a normal random variation here. I'm going to say apply to that. And then what it does is Fero goes out and it resolves for that plane. I'm going to go back to the report tab. Okay, now look, I've, uh, I've decreased that form, the variation of that form, right now down to a little bit less than 400 thousandths. So 393 thousandths here, which is considerably better than that 1.1 inches that we saw uh, before I deselected those two points that were part of the readings. So I just wanted to show that how easy it is that when you go and you shoot these planes or these circles or whatever content or feature that you've captured, go to the readings tab and just check by doing this deviation from fit. And then what it does is Farrell will show you all of the points that were used and how they were used to solve for that deviation. And if you've got one that's an obvious outlier, it makes good sense to just deselect those out of the sample and then look at the form again just to make sure that it... Um, but it actually helped out the, uh, the flatness, in this case, the flatness of a plane. Yeah.